It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence of me, Ernest Hancock, on my way back to life. <clears throat> well, I'm getting there. Starting to feel a little bit better. We have Robert Weil on, and he's um, lived in China. He's written about it. And we're talking about the socioeconomic uh, policies of various governments. And I'm, I'm wanting to make sure that we understand that we're speaking the same language. Now, Robert, uh, before we were cut off by the, the clock... He is describing the working conditions in China to where people were forced, and I, I want to get the definition of that, to where they're working long hours. They're getting uh, exploited. I mean, heck, you know, China is even, you know, getting prisoners and working them and, you know, getting some body organs. I mean, you know, it's, it's bad, you know, I, as this what happens with collectives. But I'm just going, you know, let's, let's try and see if we can walk through what would be a solution how is and, and who would be in charge and who's in charge of the people in charge? So I uh, I want to ask Robert again, you know, uh, let you finish your thought. If we don't want people exploited or having to be forced to work, um, are you talking about the force of the market or somebody actually forcing them? Well, I'm, I'm not clear. I'm not clear what you're asking. I mean, the. The present situation in China is that, you know, hundreds of millions of workers and peasants are struggling for survival under very difficult circumstances. Some have actually benefited from the present uh, organization of the, of the economy in all, in all classes, but tens of millions have lost their jobs and hundreds of millions are barely surviving on the farms. Now, there's obviously an economic compulsion that's involved in this, but there's also a, a, a great deal of, of state force that's used within this system. Um, you know, demonstrations are put down, and sometimes quite brutally. Um, uh, you know, people are cleared off their land by force. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not a question of either or. Any more than it is in the United States. I mean, you know, how, how many picket lines are are limited or broken up by the police in various ways? You know, it, it, this this idea that one system is just a total individual freedom uh, to do anything you want without the state intervening, and the other is the uh, exact opposite. You know, is is just not true. No, I'm saying having any system that's not going to happen. It, it's having systems that's the problem in my mind. But well, you know, the so I have to ask this question: Is that uh, is there a? Let's assume that you're going to have some kind of a government, and you would say, "All right, if you're going to have this government, and it's going to have because what governments do is govern." And then uh, who are they going to govern? Well, this border, you know, these people inside this line on the map. And they should, what, provide a minimum something? And what is that minimum and who decides and how is it distributed? I mean, you know, I'm just, because you get to the point as time goes on and we have, you know, such good examples in history and the internet and the accumulation of, of uh, information in the form of video and, and uh, talk shows. I mean, it's just lots of information to where youth growing up now can uh, look at it and go, you know, it doesn't look like a lot of these systems have been working at all. How about, you know, I just, uh, I, I want to be a leave me aloneist. You know, I want to be, you know, you don't bother me. I want to be whatever, we'll take care of it ourselves. And you go, well, you can't. And you go, well, I want the freedom to try. Well, you can't. Well, then you're not free. I mean, it just, these kind of questions come out. So I'm looking, if you're going to have a government to justify its existence what do you think they should be doing to be a good government? I mean, maybe not perfect, but to be, you know, the dial kind of goes towards being good because they what? What what defines them as being good? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, I didn't come on your program to uh, debate abstractly forms of government, you know, whatever. What did you I come mean, on I for? Thought I, well, I mean, what do you think? You invited me on to talk about China and perhaps perhaps India, and to, 
you know, talk about the situation that's actually going on in these countries. This is a situation. The relation to the United States. This is a situation. Not to, you know, discuss abstractly what kind of libertarian form of government would be the best. Oh, this because is exactly what's going on, what Robert. You seem to want to talk about. That's this is exactly well, what's mean, going that's on. What you want to talk about, you know, talk about it. But I, you know, I came on to try and give you some insights into what's actually occurring in these other countries and their relations with the United States. The range of point, so. the range of the social and economic um, processes that's going on from India, China, and the United States is probably the widest opportunity of an example that i've ever witnessed i i've never seen such a large segment that is so wide from total control that's starting to give up that control to much less control that is it's it's, it's there's big opportunities here and i thought you would be a well, someone I mean, that, total, total control doesn't describe the chinese system if you want to really talk about it in detail instead of just your image of it um, you know, that's fine. Um, the systems are in many ways more similar to each other right now. That's kind of my point. And they were, you know, 30 years ago. And um, so they don't represent, you know, these this enormous range. They're gradations within basically capitalist societies, uh, China being the more statist, uh, in part because it still has remnants of the earlier socialist period, and the U.S. being, you know, the less statist. But they're not really alternate forms of organizing society at this point. They were alternate forms of organizing society during the Mao era when you actually had a different form of social organization in China. But you really don't have that anymore. Well, this is my so point, you, Robert. You don't have, you don't, you're not really talking about uh, radically different examples in this case. Well, this is my point, is that they, they were, and it, we tried it. It's like, uh, you know, I, I say on the show often, I'll well, go... who's we? Are you talking about, I, I mean, are you... Are, humanity. Are you saying... Humanity. You know, I, I'm just looking, we've tried a lot of different things, you know, humanity has. And I always say, can we hurry up and get to a police state so we can leave? I mean, once we get to the point that where we have total controls that are the kind of uh, government policies that we have here in America, in just to, as you talked about earlier with the the right to protest and so on, well, we saw what happened in Tiananmen. Well, we got the same kind of stuff that we're building up to here. We got you know Patriot Acts that's building. They're just waiting for a, the next Tiananmen Square, and I suspect Washington will treat it the same way that Chinese did. So I'm going okay. So now we're we had this wide range, and it's starting to come down to where you look at the different colors on a map, and Stefan Molino, a guest I've had on before, an anarchist, he goes, it's just farms. We're just livestock. It's just what is the best livestock management tool that we can get the most productivity out of the people inside these geographic areas to, in service of something. You know, I don't know, the banks or the countries or the elite or whatever. So we had a wide range from India that was a colony of the British Empire, China that was more autonomous and Asian culture and, and on their own, the United States, and exactly what you're saying, they're starting to merge into this, this most productive livestock management system that creates under the illusion of pro private property and property rights and individual rewards and so on, you get the most productivity out of them. But then what your concern is, is that you miss some kind of a, a social obligation that these governments would have to the lives of the individual. So I'm going, how are we to address that? You know, what is it that we would have as, as we become more productive and we have a, a stratification of people? You have the elite and the rich and the more wealthy and productive, and you have people that are left behind. How are we going to address that? So I would think you would be the person to ask that. Well, if, as I said earlier, if you, if you ask a lot of, of working class Chinese, they will say that they actually had a better... Uh, existence under the collectivized system um, than they do now because they had they their economic level was not very high but they had all kinds of social benefits and protections that they've now lost so and in India uh, the, the 
bulk of the working classes are in a similar situation, not to speak of the United States today. So, you know, that's part of your answer, is that a lot of working people all over the world um, feel that other alternative forms of organizing society, along a more socialistic approach, are actually beneficial for them. Not for the people at the top, not for the Wall Street bankers and the Chinese and Indian billionaires, but for actual working people. Robert Weil, author of Red Cat, White Cat, China and the Contradictions of Market Socialism. I think our goals are a lot more similar than he thinks. We're just looking at it in a different way. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that. Okay. (laughs) Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured.